Today I'm going to show you how to get raid loot as a solo player without actually completing any raid encounter. I've done a few videos on this in the past, but wanted to make sure I had an up-to-date version for 2024. In a nutshell, I'll show you how to get nine different raid chests, which you can do once per character per week, meaning if you have three characters, that is 27 chests you can get for free per week as a solo player. The only downside is that these raid chests will only drop gear that you've already unlocked in that raid, which is unfortunate, but what are you going to do? At the end of the day, it's still a great free solo raid loot farm and an okay free spoils of conquest farm. So let's get right into it. Like last time, we'll start with the easiest loot, which is Deepstone Crypt. Fire up a fresh Deepstone run and all you're really going to do is ride your sparrow all the way through the opening encounter like you normally would. Here's the route, which I'll speed up a tiny bit. When you get to the very end, rather than complete the encounter, hop up the cliffside over to your right and claim your free loot. Next up, Vow of the Disciple, which is also fairly easy. Go ahead and kill the Savathun clone in the beginning, then ride your sparrow until you get to the opening encounter. A bunch of enemies are going to spawn in. Try to kill the three abominations if you can. Doing that should prevent you from dying to the darkness debuff and will make getting that chest a little bit easier. When the abominations are dead, hop on your sparrow and ride forward a little bit before taking a quick left. You're looking for this right here, a crystal you'll need to shoot and break. Shoot it and break it, and now you're looking for two more. The next one is just up ahead. I'll show you the way. Now get on your sparrow again and go find the third and final one. Head under the bridge to shoot that third and final crystal, then take the following route to the chest. Next is chest number three from the most recent raid in D2, Crota's End. This one is kind of weird because the chest is in the lantern encounter and it's very easy to reach when you're there. The only problem is that you can't form the bridge to get to the lantern encounter as a solo player due to how the chalice mechanic works. This is where checkpoint holding bots come in clutch. There's multiple D2 checkpoint resources out there. Some are free, some aren't. I'm gonna go ahead and plug my man Luxtrux Discord, which I'll pin down in the comment section. There's a bunch of free checkpoints hookups in there and also some more custom not free checkpoint bots. At the time of this recording, the Crota checkpoint bot is for subscribers only, but might want to head over there and double check for yourself as these things are probably subject to change. Take a look at the map of this encounter. The chest is right here in this little door. Ideally, you have a sword, but I didn't bring one because I didn't feel like opening dim and I have strand grapple already. Here's the route. Follow me to the chest. Chest number four is from Root of Nightmares. This is a long chest route that involves a lot of out of bounding, but it's relatively easy to do. Like before, you're gonna need a checkpoint bot to get a final Nezarek boss checkpoint. Use whatever resource you're comfortable with. When you've got a checkpoint loaded up, grab an Eager Edge sword and either Heat Rises if you're a Warlock, Stompies if you're a Hunter, or Lion Rampants if you're a Titan. Go ahead and follow the route here.
Around this point, things can get tricky, but just keep jumping up and use either a sword or a strand grapple to get out of that tight little area by the wall where I am now. Right about here, there's going to be a doorway where you should take a brief pause, open your game settings, and lower your in-game frame rate. When you've done that, slowly back into the doorway until the game begins loading and then run forward. If you pull it off and don't get teleported, good job, you can now put your frames back up to what they normally are. If you try that without changing your frames, you can either die or get teleported to the beginning of the jumping puzzle encounter, which isn't really that bad of a thing. You can get the chest that way, but you will need a sword and strand because the launch pads won't be active for whatever reason. But if you lower the frames, back up, load the zone, and then run forward, you should be good to go. Keep following the route. Head to the ledge and look down to shoot that little button and you'll have opened the door behind you containing the raid loot. Chest number five is from Last Wish, where you can get two different chests on your own. Easiest one first, go ahead and load up a Shiro Chi checkpoint via the bot or Discord service of your choice, or just go to the wish wall at the beginning of the raid and plug in this exact code to get taken to Shiro Chi. When you're there, it's kind of easy mode with just a sword and strand. Turn around and take the following route. Chest number six is also in Last Wish and is a tad harder. Go to the wish wall and load up the Morgeth wish shown here. When you're at the encounter, rally flag up, then turn around and get ready to cross back over the non-existent bridge to the other side. Warlock players pop Dawnblade and just Icarus Dash all the way across the gap. Yours is probably the easiest. Titan players pop on a sword, line rampant, catapult lift, and thunder crash. Your move is to jump up, sword swing, fall a tiny bit, activate catapult lift again, swing, fall catapult, swing and repeat over and over. You can definitely do it way better than I'm showing how to in my clip, but when you're close enough to the other side, just pop thunder crash and finish things up that way. Hunter players, shatter skating still works, but I think the easier method is to just use strand, widow silk, grapple grenade, stompies, and an eager edge sword. Jump twice off the bridge, sword one time, followed by two back-to-back -back grapple grenades. Then go ahead and pop your super and use your spin the rope move a few times to keep your forward momentum going and then when your super is over, you'll have your grapple grenade charges back. Use them both, GG easy. When you're across, just take the following route to get to the chest. Chest number seven is in Vault of Glass, which isn't that hard, but you have to learn kind of a weird sparrow technique, which still has not been patched out of the game yet. Here's how it works. You wanna strafe your sparrow to the left, then boost left as you get off your sparrow to the left, you're going to use the momentum of your sparrow to literally push your guardian through a rock and out of the map. So again, load into Vault of Glass and then head off to the right until you get about here. The spot you're going to end up in is this rock to my left. So just line up your sparrow, strafe left and do like I showed you. Boost left and mash your guardian into the rock. You'll fall down through the map. Make sure you have a sword on you to quickly recover to the closest nearby rock, then hit the following route that I can show you right now.
When you're about at this point, just keep going dead ahead until you continue to fall off the map and die. You'll spawn back inside the map beyond the opening gate encounter and just follow where I go to get to the chest. Chests number 8 and 9 are both from Garden of Salvation and they're the most annoying to get by far. Launch up the raid, get to the first encounter, and drop a raid banner to get full rocket launcher ammo. Then for the first chest, follow the route shown here. When you get to this exact spot, you're going to need to run forward and jump and then slide. The reason for that is there's an invisible wall right in front of you by these pink flowers right here. Jump over and slide beyond the invisible wall. It will get tricky, but you can do it. Then drop down off the ledge to the left and aim for that shadowy area you see me falling for right now. This is kind of hard to do. Right when you see that tiny text at the bottom that says it's loading the new area, kill yourself with a rocket launcher. If your timing is bad, you will respawn to exactly where you just landed and rocketed yourself. Just reload the raid and try it again if you fail. If your timing is good though, you will spawn down in the cave below. Now just follow me to the chest. Okay, after you've gotten that chest, keep going forward to get chest number nine. Before heading to that final chest though, be sure to change to a strand subclass if you can. Follow the route I show here. here. Okay, now all you have to do is get up this gigantic wall. You can use Salvation's Grip if you don't have Strand unlocked, but if you have Strand, we're going to go ahead and Rocket Grapple with Gallarhorn. Just look straight up, fire your G-Horn, and immediately mash the grenade button with your Strand Grapple Grenade and just ride the rocket all the way up. Technically, you can do that with any rocket launcher in the game, but it's easier IMO to do with G-Horn because it has low velocity and therefore is easier to grapple. When you're at the top, follow my route shown here. Your goal is to stay in the air for as long as you can for this next part to avoid these soft kill zones, which are very annoying. Once you eventually fall down into the big pit, congratulations, hard part over, now go get your loot. If today's video helped you in any way, please click the like button and share with a friend. Thank you for watching my channel in 2023. More great stuff to come next year, I promise. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.